Over the past 10 years of hunting and filming professionally, my journey has evolved. I once sought animals in adventure, and I still seek those things. Yet now more than ever, I seek answers around the growing questions that surround myself as a hunter. I've found that my connection to the land brings a certain clarity to the rest of my life. This is what brings me back into high country. This was a defining moment in my hunt. Finally, I had the ram I wanted at less than eight yards, then at 40, and then at 50. I knew I could get an arrow in him. I knew I could make the shot, and I didn't do it. I didn't feel good about the angle, and I didn't feel good about the amount of time he gave me. Nothing inside told me to pull the trigger. I would be willing to bet less than 15 people in the world had ever arrowed a ram of this caliber. And I had it right in front of me. But the respect for the animal and making sure everything was perfect outweighed the opportunity for me to put an arrow in it. That can be hard. I instantly wondered if I had made the wrong decision. But everything happens for a reason. No matter how much I wanted that ram. It just never felt right. even 20 yards and he dropped down in this dip and I couldn't see him till 40. Oh, that was fun. Boy, we played that stock perfectly. We were patient. We just needed him to be one of the ones that stood there. He had no idea we were here. I couldn't quit thinking about the ram that had got away. How could I have a ram so close and not get an opportunity? It was driving me nuts. I started to wonder if I should have let the arrow go, even though everything inside of me was telling me no. But I knew that you have to trust your gut in hunting. And the second you start not listening to yourself is the second things start not going the way you pictured them. So as difficult as it was, I felt confident in my decision to let that world-class ram walk.
a freaking yeah. boat. It's made out of buffalo skin. Buffalo hide canoe. That's what they were towing behind them. Oh my gosh. I flip it over, but there could be a dead body up <laughs> there. <laughs> wow. It's a buffalo hide canoe that Lewis and Clark must have left here. <laughs> with a can of Folgers. <laughs> what the hell is in there? Oh, it's like tar or something. They oh, got a the, paintbrush in there to waterproof it. coat it, yeah. It must be a little pine bitch or something like that, probably. Yeah, it's a buffalo hide canoe, you know? This is a historical place where people that are, you know, want to recreate what Lewis and Clark went through will come down through here. And I'm pretty sure we saw these guys camp down the way, but this is pretty impressive. He was just back there. Champ! I'll go try to find him. Of course, there he's been around that corner. He's behind a tree, but I think he's right up in the sea. As the river began to freeze up and areas started to become much harder to get into, I couldn't help but to wonder if I had screwed up. Should I have taken more stocks on different rams? Should I have been more aggressive? Should I have hunted more early on? All these questions started to run through my mind as it became more difficult to get into areas. The river was impassable. And the areas that sheep were in were pretty dangerous to try to approach by foot. 
So all of a sudden, feeling like I had all the time in the world and wanting to soak up every moment became real in a hurry. The big rams I did know about had moved, and none of the U groups were in the same location. The snow had completely shifted things around, and it became much harder to find some of the bigger rams. With the snow moving all the sheep around and really feeling like I had lost all grasp on all the research I had been collecting, getting the ram I wanted was becoming more important than trying to do it with the bow. So with only nine days left, I decided to start hunting with a rifle. where the pavement ends, on X begins. Way down here, 
off of this hill. My ram is laying over that hill. We have not put our hands on him yet. But what an amazing day. It's November 16th. Um, there's nine days left after this in the season. I've been here since August, off and on. And I've looked over hundreds of rams. I've never been looking for a number. I've never been looking for anything in particular other than just that ram that gets my heart going. And this ram absolutely did that. We spotted him. We started hiking this morning. It's a beautiful morning. And spotted him. And he's only the second ram that when I looked at him, I made a decision that quick. Absolutely spectacular animal. Absolutely spectacular place on earth. This, the Missouri River breaks are unlike anywhere in the world. They really are a landscape of their own. Let's go look at this thing. Another one to add to a book of stories, huh, Dad? Yep. Something different. Hunting bighorn sheep is something I hope more people get the opportunity to do. They're an amazing animal. Everything about them is fascinating. From the way they move, to the way they interact, and even where they live. The bighorn sheep has always been an iconic species of North America. And I can see why now, after spending this much time with them. I've never hunted an animal I didn't fall in love with, and I've never been on a hunt I didn't enjoy. And hunting bighorn sheep is something I hope more people get the opportunity to enjoy. Yeah, we, we got this. This part's done, now we can... 